Originating in China, since December, more than 100,000 people in almost 100 countries worldwide have become infected with the novel coronavirus. Although the WHO has not yet officially named this a pandemic, the rapid spread meets all the criteria of a global epidemic, which is a pandemic. The pathogen, the virus COVID-19, is currently the subject of intensive research. A vaccine could be available early next year. New antiviral and existing drugs are in the pipeline and are being tested. The fact that most viruses show less activity in the warmer season is currently playing a positive role in this development. Should the coronavirus become less active towards summer, we would gain valuable time and the curve of new infections would naturally flatten. Based on current data, 80% of infections are mild. About 15% have to be treated in hospital and 5% require intensive medical care. Severe cases of disease have so far been seen almost exclusively in the age group over 80 and in patients with pre-existing conditions. All people under 50 are significantly less at risk. It is encouraging, though not yet fully understood, that children and adolescents apparently hardly ever fall ill. Furthermore, it is unclear whether people who are infected but show no symptoms are contagious. Otherwise, the virus is transmitted by droplet infection. In principle, you can protect yourself by washing your hands regularly. You should also get into the habit of not touching your face without first washing your hands. Always sneeze in the crook of your arm. If you have cold symptoms, you should withdraw if possible. Otherwise, if symptomatic, out of consideration for others, you should wear a surgical mask if moving in public places. Conversely, if you are healthy, it is of no use to wear a mask out of fear of being infected. Nevertheless, even these measures cannot provide 100% protection against infection. At present, experts assume that between 25 to 70% of the total population will become infected at some point. So what can be done now? A situation like this also offers an opportunity to rethink our lifestyle. A healthy, stable immune system is the best basis to prevent or cope well with a coronavirus infection. Interval fasting, also known as a 16-8 diet, has shown to improve our immunity. Please watch my explanatory video for more details. Fasting, in general, has an immune-boosting effect. Other than that, avoid too much animal protein like meats and dairy products. Also. Cut down on your sugar intake. Instead, eat lots of vegetables and fruit. Exercise regularly. Kids need to have at least one hour of physical activity per day, preferably outdoors. Adults need two hours of sport of some sort per week. Physical activity not only has an immune stimulating effect, but also extends our life expectancy. I advise my patients to take a sauna once a week or at least do a so-called small knipe shower every day, which means alternating between cold and hot water five times when taking a shower. This is also a clinically proven way to increase immunity. There are a number of medicinal plants with antiviral properties that have a solid research evidence base. These include Echinacea, Calmec, African geranium, nasturtium, horseradish, garlic and ginger. Herbal medicines sold on the German market that contain these ingredients are echinocene juice, esperitox, umcaloabo, angocene. Ginger and garlic may be pressed and mixed into juices or teas. Also, I have been for many years successfully using vitamin C as a high dose infusion in combination with the amino acid L-lysine in immunocompromised patients 
for viral infections such as shingles. And finally, the most important thing, do not panic. The new coronavirus is not unlike influenza. Every year, between several hundred and 20,000 people die of influenza in Germany and up to 60,000 in the US. This is something we very often forget in the current debate. Fear and panic arise from ignorance and are very important stressors. Stress and fear have an immunosuppressive effect, making us more susceptible to infections. This is where relaxation techniques and meditation help. Learn a relaxation technique like mindfulness-based stress reduction, MBSR, or yoga. Discover active relaxation. You can also watch my explanatory videos on these and other topics on my website www.doctau.de